Hi. What we have here is four questions on electrical system, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law for current voltage that effectively support the lecture, hopefully you've watched the lecture, on an introduction to electrical systems. Hi, so for question one, we're going to focus on electrical system. So this is based on section 1.2 from lecture one. So for the question, what I'm going to, well, what, what, what the question's on is explain the circuit schematic for the DC motor voltage source given below. So this, really the intention of this question is just, it's quite general and it's really just here just to kind of get you kind of thinking around the key components and the, some of the terminology used um, for electrical circuits. So as you can see here, what we have is a source, which is your DC voltage, which is here represented in picture or form here. What we have is a load here, and which is effectively represented using this circle and the M in the middle, which is our DC motor here. So we've got a load, we've got a source. What we have is a transmission system, which is effectively the wires, which you can see here in well, green and yellowy looking wires. What's going on here is effectively you've got a current flowing through the circuit. And this current here is effectively the rate of the flow of charge. This rate of flow of charge is created via this DC voltage source. So the DC voltage source effectively causes the current to flow by supplying electrical energy from a source. So it creates this, uh, this effectively this DC voltage source, um, EMF, and it's just you end up with this potential difference. So in this case, it's the potential difference is nine volts. The final thing to note is the power going through this circuit, because we're talking about a uh, DC motor and voltage source. We're talking here, uh, the, the final thing really is power, where power is equal to the voltage multiplied by the current. So that there is the basic kind of some, some of the key terms and um, that I expect you to get familiar with um, throughout kind of this, this, this short course. What I would say is um, at any point, if you want to obviously look at the questions and answer them before obviously I go through the explanation, that's probably why. So you can obviously just pause the video and have a go at the question and then obviously play the video and, and see the solution. And that applies to all the questions in the tutorials. This question two is on Ohm's law. So if you're struggling with some of the background to this question, see section one three on Ohm's law from the lecture one. So this question, what we've got here is a configuration uh, electric circuit where we've got voltages measured here and here. What we have obviously is a voltage difference between this uh, resistor, either end of this resistor, where the resistor has a value of one kilo ohms. What I'm asking in this question is to determine what the current denoted I is that's passing through the resistor. So if you recall the Ohm's law equation be given by this, where O's obviously denoting current is equal to V, which is your voltage over your resistor value. Where in this case, what we've got here is a voltage difference. So we need to take that into account for the voltage value. So it's 15.8 take away 12.3 over the resistor value, which in this case is one kilo ohm. So one to ten, ten, one times ten to the power of three, is a thousand, and that there is going to be equal to zero point zero zero three five. And remember the units for current is amps. Alternatively, we can write this three point five milliamp. Okay, milliamp is just ten to the power minus three. This next question is on Kirchhoff's law. For any background into Kirchhoff's law, see section 1.4 from lecture one on basic electrical circuits and components. 
So in this question, what we're going to use is Kirchhoff's current law to determine the current denoted I subscript 2. So you can see that given here. What we have is obviously two other resistors here. So the resistor I subscript 1, I subscript 3, and I subscript 1, 15 amps, and I subscript 3, 4 amps. So if you recall from Kirchhoff's law, when we're considering current, the law states that current flowing into a point, and we're considering this point here, where I'm just putting on there. So the current, the law states that current flowing into a point must be equal to that flowing out. So effectively, it's going to give us this. So I1 is, well, in fact, I'm just going to write the balance that. I1, take away I2, take away I3 is going to be equal to zero. Okay, because if you recall, the current flowing in is equal to the current flowing out, hence the opposite signs here. If we just rearrange that, because we want to determine what I2 is, so I2 is going to be equal to I1, take away I3. But in this case, you know, I1 is 15, take away 4. So it's effectively the answer is 11 amps. So I2 is equal to 11 amps. It's kind of obvious because when you look at it, you think, well, 15 amps is flowing through this this resistor here the junction four volts goes four um, amps sorry is effectively passing through this resistor so it's obviously the dis the difference up here it needs to be 11 amps so in this question four we're again going to consider Kirchhoff's law but in this case now we're going to look at the voltage so in this question it asks use Kirchhoff's voltage law to determine the magnitude of v1 in the given circuit. So what we have here is effectively your source voltage here, or potential difference from the this this um, could be a DC DC battery. Here um, we have V1 and V2, so potential difference across these two resistors. So if you recall the kind of Kirchhoff's law, at any point the algebraic sum of the voltage across any loop and you've got effectively a loop here i.e the potential difference in a circuit is zero okay so that what that means is this here so if i'm just going to write this out this has got to be equal to zero so effectively means that the source here the source voltage here take away v1 take away v2 is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so what we do is, as I said, that must be equal to zero. So when the summing the voltages around a loop, the clockwise voltages are assigned in the opposite polarity to those that are in um, those that are in anti-clockwise. So if we do this, so nine take away well v one's what we're looking for, take away four is equal to zero so I could have rearranged that but this is fine anyway therefore v1 is equal to 5 volts so that there is equal to 5 volts and again you can see 9 volts supply 4 5 adds up to 9 okay so that concludes this part of the tutorial if there's any questions please feel free to um, contact me